Well, I got this big Nikon fisheye on eBay and paid about $800 for it. And it has some fog in the lenses, not in the objective here, thankfully. It's in nice, nice shape. But it's uh, a little foggy, and I thought um, I better find somebody who can uh, clean, clean it up. And since then, and the, the seller didn't realize it had that, um, the need for a cleaning or worse. Um, since then, I've learned uh, to do, take apart a few Nikon lenses. And even though this isn't on Richard Hawes' blog, it's, um, I've learned enough that I'm going to try and open this up. So I predict what's going to happen in here is we've got a set screw here. This is all that interesting objective lens material. And what's back here is going to be kind of normal, to put it in my own layman's terms. So um, I've got all the right screwdrivers from my other lens projects. This is, I believe, is number four, and I have the confidence to just look inside. So that's what we're going to do here. And um, I will confess that I had this screw out already because, and then I realized I wanted to make this video. So I'm going to be recreating this for dramatic effect. Every screw gets its Ziploc bag so I can put it back together. Sometimes I'll take photos along the way. I'll take a video in this case. And, um, and then this should unscrew. And it does. Well, I think I'm best off doing this. Right now I have an adapter for my, my Nikon Z6 and a lens cap on it. Just happens to be there because that's how I use it. But I don't use it since it's foggy. So I'm planning to do nothing with the objective. If it's clean, I don't need to go there. And... It really is unscrewing. It just had a lot of threads to cover there. There we go. So there's clean. Very nice. So that's the part that makes it a fisheye. And this is the part that makes it a camera lens. And so in here, we have the, the built-in filters, which show dirt, if not fungus. So I'm going to, now's when I get to start guessing. And from the principles I've learned from the other, other lenses, I have some ideas. Now, I've never seen a, an internal filter like this, but we can figure that out. Um, and basically, you just start unscrewing screws from each end. Um, the focus is a little, I don't know, it's got rough spots and there you can see the, the stop there. So who knows what we'll find, but we've got a couple of screws to take off here. I suspect that this ring here with these three slot screws has to do with setting the infinity focus. And I've, I've seen something like that before. My rule of thumb is I'm going to make a little mark on everything before I take it apart so that I can get it back to exactly where it is in case I don't feel like uh, learning the calibration process. And then um, that'll usually get me back where I'm going. Here we go. So the first thing while I'm playing with this is I found that there's a little ring that comes out here. That's believe is going to be the spacer that sets the axial position of the main objective, which I have sitting over here, lens up, I'm going to protect that. So that's going to get cleaned up because it's a little grungy. 
Next thing I think I'll take off is the focus ring. Well, the uh, focus ring screws were stubborn, so I decided to work on the back end here. And so I've unscrewed these five bayonet mount screws using a Brownells thin bit to get them started. They weren't too tough. And then just finishing with the, the normal screwdriver and gave a little snap spring loaded when I lifted that up as far as I could tell. And that would be from this element here that engages the, the diaphragm. And then we've got our view. Nothing terribly unusual in here, but I do see this is going to be the, the lens element that we're going to want to get out of there so we can get it unscrewed. I may start by unscrewing this rear ring. There's a little aperture there that does not have a set screw. That's just for dribbling a little solvent in to loosen the adhesive. Unscrewing that and we can start taking lenses out and we'll see how far we can get into it without taking it apart more than we need to but I still want to get it taken apart to get the, the focus um, figured out. It's interesting on the focus ring, we have these two screws and that's it. And so that side seems connected and this side, even before they've been loosened, has a wobble. Um, so this, this focus ring in a way is kind of almost held in by the, by the objective or something like that. We'll see how that works out. We can also now remove the aperture ring. Not too dirty inside, but everything bears a little bit of cleaning. There's the spring. Nothing I've done yet needs to be too aligned on this. Um, obviously the, the detent spring is going to align with these detent ridges and there's going to be a uh, this is the, the diaphragm control element on the side. That is going to be engaged by a little notch here. So I'm not going to need any, anything aligned on, um, on reassembling it. But it's nice and dirty here, which is satisfying because we're going to get it, get it cleaned up good and everything's going to be running more smoothly. Well, after soaking it with some rubbing alcohol and then some, and that didn't work, Starbond debonder glue remover, um, I got the first one to budge, and I'm going to do the second one here on camera. One of the things that I do is I, I, if it's not just coming out unscrewing, I screw it in, and I rock it back and forth. That also helps make sure I've got that screwdriver seated just right. And it moved. So we've got a magnetized screwdriver, which helps. And we'll see what it looks like when we take out the focus ring. expecting that to just slip right off, and it does. Hopefully nothing goes flying under spring pressure, but I don't have any reason to believe it would. There we go. So, no surprises. Okay, so that's how the focus ring works. The focus ring is attached 
that one place right here, that's your focusing mechanism. And so buried deep inside there are going to be the helicoids. And that explains why it's connected in only, in only one place. I think that's a way of bypassing the, the filter assembly. Interesting. Now my next choice is which screws to go after. So I could go after these three around here, and I can see that those are, are engaged. They're not exactly at, at even spacings, and they're engaged to this plate here that seems to be holding in the filter um, assembly, or part of the filter assembly. And so I think if I want to go in on that side, that's going to release the plate. It'll expose the hub of the of this filter and let me get farther into the filter situation. Um, we'll learn more when we get there. Perhaps we have to take this top plate off and then that'll let us lift the whole filter wheel out for a good cleaning and give us access to that next, well, whatever is behind there. That There's a lens in there in the assembly behind there. And, um, but realistically, all the, all the lenses are in this little space right here besides the giant objective. My other alternative, I'm gonna to try to go after this silver ring here because I think that's maybe part of what retains the optics inside of this mechanism so I can get the optics out of here um, I'll probably go at both ways because I want to get the filter out for cleaning and get the optics out for cleaning and then I can deal with the greasing and cleaning the cleaning and greasing the focusing mechanism. And so those have been a little stubborn. I put a little alcohol on them to see if that lets it release and we'll see if we're loose yet. It's still rather stubborn. Some use a drop of acetone and I might do that as well. The last thing I want to do is destroy a screw and have to drill it out. All the, the painted screws seem to be chipped. I'm not sure if that's just because it's wear and tear and high spots or whether someone has tried to get in here, but I don't see any evidence on the inside yet that it's been serviced. Those are solid and stuck. Okay. I'll work on that some more. So while waiting for my solvent, I decided to try this retaining ring here to see if I could unscrew and it turns out I'm unscrewing more than that, which is good news. So I'm gonna get this rear lens assembly out of here because this has a protruding rear element and every time I'm tempted to turn this over to work on it, I risk rubbing that element and scratching it on the bench top. Okay, so there we have some, and there's more in there. I'm looking at seven little dots, and that tells me we've got the, the iris assembly um, at that point, and I'm going to have to go at things on the other side. But this at least will, and I'll have to get that ring off of there. I've got one or two elements to clean. I could actually clean them as they are here, see if that gets it done. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to do the, when I have a, a $40 lens, it's easy to say, well, let's just learn a lot and explore. But when you have an $800 lens, 
um, that if really clean, you know, might go for a thousand or twelve hundred. Not that I'm planning to sell it. Um, I'm not necessarily looking to dig into things that don't need digging. Here we've got our diaphragm, which is nice and dry, reasonably uniform aperture. Works great. I do not want to mess with it. And I do have access if that rear surface if that rear surface of that element were the only one that needed cleaning, um, I can get at it from there. Yeah, that does that element does have some of the fog, so that's gonna need to be cleaned. It's not on the filter. I can See that in there? You can't, but when I get the reflection just right, I can see the little speckles, the little dots of foggy dots. I don't know whether it's on the first surface or the second surface. But I have this safely out of here. I'm a lot safer for flipping this around and messing with screws. Oh good, I got it to just nudge turning inward, so maybe it's going to turn outward. Yes. resistance. Yeah, that was loctited in place. And it just popped off. And I have the world's best luck with lost screws. For some reason, I brushed that against the Ziploc bag. It went flying eight inches away right in front of me on my bench top. world's luckiest repairman. got it rocked out. I think part of the benefits of the rocking action is it helps us keep the screwdriver blade nicely engaged so we don't slip. Magnetized helps us pick it up. Others use acetone for their screw Loctite solvent. I use that star bonder, debonder, because it's here and the acetone is down in the garage so it doesn't. This is a little challenging because of the, the the filter flange here. Reminds me of National Geographic photo essay from the 60s of African tribes with plates in their lips. There. Oh, that's much better. Okay. Those three are out. Tucked away in my box in sequence. And now this will probably just 
wiggle off. I don't know what that's going to do. Make sure I don't harm the, the detent. And that is... There, we got part of the... That must be the helicoid key right there. I have no idea what that is. We'll figure it out. just playing with this and I was manipulating this this uh, focusing element back and forth to see what it had to do with this because I haven't figured out what that does yet but um, I found that the silver key here when I was just pushing on it it pushed inward like that and it has a little set screw in here that splits and widens this to tighten it up. So um, that's interesting. It's a little tricky. It was nice and snug. And so when I'm reattaching the focusing ring, that's what pulls it back out in place. I suppose when we have the, the ring installed like this, we'll still have a chance to tighten that up if we have a little bit of a, of a rattle that we want to eliminate from the focusing. It had none initially and it looks like it has none. I'm going to probably just leave it alone um, but I'll ask myself should I be removing that or when shall I remove that from this during the process and I think that will just reveal itself as we go. Let's look at this key here. It has similar qualities. And on the inside here, um, you can see it also has a set screw. I see some, some adhesive or lacquer on there. And that's not associated with the diaphragm. And it's undoubtedly, let's see if I can manipulate the focusing, that should be I'm expecting that to move axially. Yes, it is. It's so subtle. That's So that's the helicoid key. It shifts forward and aft as I move through the range of motion. Maybe a millimeter of, of axial uh, travel. And so that means that that is the component that I will remove when I'm ready to unscrew the focus helicoid and that will reveal itself. And that's assuming that this Nikon lens is like pretty much every other Nikon lens I've worked on. Now I'm back to removing the screws for the filter assembly. These are pretty substantial long screws. And yeah, all the screws here might have been factory original sealant because they're all about equivalent and they're all pretty stubborn. And so I'm really finding that if I get this stabilized nicely on the surface, that this flange is keeping me from seeing what I'm doing. I'm gonna do it the other way because I really wanna see. very nicely. Well, that the debonder is my new best friend. Now we get to see what the heck happens inside here. So we've got our three screws tucked away in sequence in my pocket. And now something should come out. I suppose I could bang it, but I'm not going to do that. There are spring-loaded things here. Oh, things are getting a little loosey-goosey when I wobble the wheel. A 
that's a good sign. It's already a mess and I'm gonna clean it. I'm gonna do one old telescope trick. It doesn't require a bread bag. It's my bread bag technique for when I know that there are spring-loaded detents. But if you, I may need a larger bag anyway. Just to give me room to work. That way if something goes flying, I'm gonna get a bigger bag. Well, I've got a bigger bag so I can work and see a lot better and it's going to have better chance of containment. I'm going to see if this just drops out. Nothing yet. to the focusing element, as you would imagine. What else can I take apart here? I can remove the flange housing and the flange lid screws. Got four screws on each of those. Well, I think I'm going to put some some debonder on all those screws because they're going to have to come out eventually, probably. And then we'll go back to the question. So on a project where you're going where you've never gone before, there's a lot more kind of looking and thinking and guessing. And my guess, first of all, that, that little metal strip with two screws, I'll bet that is restraining some kind of a spring detent for the for the filter rotor. I also can tell that this element here that I got loosened um, is not going to come out be, as is because we have a, a ledge there and if, even if I could loosen it it's not going to lift through because we've got a, a narrow aperture here. That led me to look at these screws that um, secure, I believe, this element here, which is unpainted anodized. And then there's a junction here where we go to the, to, the, to the painted element. That's a clue for me that this might be two parts. I can't quite see the seam and I'm not certain about it. It could be one part, but something something here needs to be removed and and then I'm seeing this, where you see the, where you see the, the, um, the screw. It looks like this is just thin, about a millimeter, millimeter and a half thick, but it's actually all one piece. And there's just a little slit there, about an inch long, where the screw goes in on all of those. And I'm trying to figure out why would they do that, but they have this big honking thing hanging on to that screw thread here and that is what holds it together and I just wonder if that's meant to be kind of a shock absorber or something like that so that instead of breaking a screw you get a little bit of flexibility there. Um, I have no idea maybe we'll learn more. I can also see in the back here there is let's get better lighting. You can see the the screw hole where it's um where it erupts there from the inner surface so i'm gonna have to take those out but i do imagine that i'm, I'm asking myself if there's any alignment issues because this feels like the the kind of an adjustment where i've seen on other lenses where it's adjusting our infinity focus but i don't think so i think it's just as it is and that just needs to come out so that's my next job These are a little larger, I'll see if... No, they're not.
not as they're not large enough for my skinniest brown owls bit so i'm just going to go with my with my um, favorite here So these aren't high torque screws. They're not glued in place. And something should come apart here. Nothing is immediately seen to be loose. Makes me wonder what those were doing besides just compressing down those areas for some kind of a calibration or stop, but nothing was contacting on the inside. The objective is threaded on the outside. So it's all clear. Oh, that's pretty. that's not profiting us, let's take something else off. So I'm removing these four screws. This is the fourth at the edge of the filter housing. And we'll see if that lets us get this filter out of our way. Everything just seems solid as a rock right now. I really expected that to be loose. It's not painted together. A little bit of a mystery still. I'm going to just do a little bit of rubbing alcohol in the crack, what I assume is a crack. That's um, one of the one of the tricks to see if something is one piece or two is put a little solvent there and if it wicks into the crack you know it's two pieces. So this is wicking in Maybe that'll just help unstick it. Maybe there's some adhesive here. Just a tiny drop. So not knowing for sure what to do here, I removed the remaining screws from the face, the ones that protrude axially, and I started wiggling. And what happens, this has just started moving, this comes off. And so I had assumed, I don't know what I assumed, but the, um, the flat face I thought was gonna be the lid, but the, that's really what's connected to something. Well, we'll see what else happens here. But now we've got Something new to look at, access to filters. I'm not even sure if I can remove those or need to, to clean them. 
All I really care about is cleaning the one clear one, but we'll get them all clean. And we've gotten a little deeper. into our puzzle. Okay, I can see that this plate has a screw or two, maybe that two, these two screws. There you go. Those two screws that connect it to this housing ring element, so. That's how it comes apart. We'll see what order and whether we even need to take that apart. Well, since I still can't figure out how to get things taken apart on this side, um, you notice in here there's this little black portion that sets the limits of the focus travel. That's a separate piece. That's what those screws engaged into. I can't figure that out yet. So I'm going to retreat to the other side and I'm gonna remove those three screws, take out this lens and iris assembly. I already removed part of it just because I started unscrewing things. I could put that back, it'll end up going back in. And then that'll leave us with just the mechanics and the filter and um, and that may give us some more clues. It'll probably give us access to the center pivot screw for this that's uh, somewhere about here. And we'll see if that takes care of it. I should add that normally when I'm taking something like this out, I'd worry that something has to be aligned. This is just a, a lens thing, so I'm not sure that there's anything critical. And I see this screw here that fits in a little a uh, little uh, gap in that flange, and I think that's going to get us reoriented, so I'm not going to worry about making scribe lines or anything like that to, to mark this, to realign it. So I put this part of the, the lens back in, and now we're going to just have a, our proper extraction, and that comes out. We're going to be taking that apart for cleaning because that's where the problems are. But that's it. This, this camera lens is this and that. And we don't have to touch this part, thankfully. Um, that end is recessed so I can set that down, but I'll still be careful with it. And now we can see inside here that's how we get that filter out with that screw there. And then we'll give it a good cleaning. I'm not sure that we need to do much more, but I'd like to get at the focusing mechanism, so we'll have to get that taken apart too. Well, I found the right bit to get this filter hub screw removed. It is such a nice fit that it just stays on even without magnetism. You can't even tilt it in there with these parallel sides. That was my thinnest of the thin bits from Brownells. Gunsmithing screwdrivers, but they really do the job on projects like this. So then, I'm not sure what's going to fall out. Um, a little, something just was rattling in there like there was a little nut or an insert. Let's see, a ball. Ooh, Some, something, <laughs> something came out and that's probably our little spring detent ball, which I'll bet goes underneath the, uh, that little flexible metal strip there. That's, that's probably going to be an adventure to put back in. And there's the, the home of that ball. You can see that there on the right. This is a little gritty. The filters are a little foggy, and so I'm going to give that a good cleaning, and then we'll figure out what else we can do to get this thing apart a little bit more before we get it back together.
Well, I have just figured out that this inner ring here rotates, and I didn't find much of a good handle for it except this. I marked where it started, and I'm going to see what happens. Does that just shift around, or can I get that rotated all the way out? I need to mark where it started so I can... Nope, that's, that's just... That's what sets the limit on the focus. So that is my my focus mark and it's located by the by those little screws and the screw holes. I've got to figure out how to get that out. Maybe it just slips out. I don't see how it's captured. Well, I'll work on it. Well, I've now convinced myself that nothing's going to come out this way. That's um, everything's going to come out the back way, and it's all going to have to do with uh, removing elements here and getting our our focusing helicoid out. Um, and so I'm just going to take it apart from the back. The, this is a little bit gritty too, so that's going to use some cleaning. I have tilted this key upward, you can see how it faces down on the outside, tilted it upward so that I can get at this set screw and allow the portion here to collapse. And I just uh, shrunk that down a little bit. I also photographed it previously so I could see which way it goes to go back. And now that's going to let the focus go round and round. And um, that's going to help me take this apart, possibly. I think it's going to get, I'm not going to tell you which way it's going to come out because I haven't figured it out yet. So I'm going to take this focus element that used to be constrained to a, a short distance here, and I'm going to turn it past that window, and that's going to cause this to proceed until it stops against that. I'm turning that. Okay, now we're, we've reached resistance because this key is at the end of its travel, so I'm going to need to remove this one, noting its orientation. I think I'll need to dissolve some, some glue on that one. Okay, I figured it out pretty dumb. But anyway, um, once I took out this key here, I realized this thing is now free to turn. So I've already turned this three turns to the left. And I'm just keeping track of that. Four. Five. Yeah, it was never going to come out that other side. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And plus. Okay, now we're talking here and things can come out and that's the way we like it. And that's going to be the helicoid that comes out this way. Okay. So for review, at this point, we could just turn this around and we'd unscrew the helicoid because it has a very small amount of 
axial movement for its rotation. It's probably a single start, so orientation isn't important, but I always assume it is because I might be wrong. And But this rotation is still stopped, not by the usual stops, but it's stopped by this key here in its axial range of travel. So this is still going to be removed. I have some um, some uh, solvent on there to try and loosen up those screws, which are not budging yet. So while we're waiting for the glue to soften, or resigning ourselves to the possibility that we can't tune up the focusing mechanism, our main objective is to clean these lenses here. So this is, an, I'm gonna mark these facing in a forward direction. This retention ring was loose. We'll see what happens when we get that opened up. And there's a first element. It's got some spots on it. That one is not does not have a safe back end. And I'll get my lens sucker. I really try to keep clean. And is that too big or will this work? It worked. So there's our first element. While I still have it oriented, I'm going to take my Sharpie and mark forward with an arrow. forward arrow toward the toward the sucker and that one also happens to be I can't quite tell is that convex forward The rear reflects kind of weirdly, so it's sort of concave, and the forward, I can't tell. That's just an oddball. I marked it. Also, I know that the, the sucker side is up, at least as I started it. So now I've got another one right there, and I am not sure if that's just going to pull out or if I have to remove this, this ring here. That did not. Well, usually they put these rings here for a reason and that may give us more access that we need. Another option is let's see if what's left is clear and don't take it apart if not. So first project is, let's clean this lens. That cleaned up very nicely. It had the spots that were fogging the images before, and it doesn't have spots no more. So now next I'm going to remove this rear element and analyze the remaining one before I decide to take it apart. Open the aperture, look through. I'm seeing some little spots. Yeah, it's looking a little foggy, so we're gonna we're gonna get this all taken down. Adjusted my lens spanner to the spacing here, and I'm not sure if I need to get any solvent in there, but we'll see if this just comes unscrewed. Yes, it does. Just 
reminding myself this is the forward direction to my left. Of course, all the mechanisms for interacting with the iris control are on the rear. our iris, all air through there, no glass to clean, and here's our, our element. So the shoulder appears to be on the forward side, and this may be a... I'll figure out if I just want to clean it in place or whether I um, want to try and take it apart. I think what I'm seeing with this, those threads there, that may unscrew or is that one piece? Well, we'll, we'll find out. Since there's no way to take this apart, my wager is that little shoulder step in there, that's just a spacer and I'll bet you this whole thing's gonna suck out or push out from the back. I'll work on that. I'll push it from the back with a, with a lens cleaner. Yep, that just comes out kind of slow and syrupy. Okay, now we're gonna put a glove back on. I'm not sure if that's a metal spacer. Oh, I'm seeing kind of wet, greasy liquid here. Okay, yeah, it's all out. And a couple elements, I've learned that sometimes these things are separate, sometimes they're not. Um, maybe I put some, some alcohol in there to, to loosen the threads and that's why it's wet, but I will clean that up. And first we're gonna make a little forward mark. We've got the the fat one. I'm gonna mark each element just in case they decide to come apart someday. And there we are with our, with our marks. That's just a spacer. It has a little bit of a chamfer forward and flat rearward. I'll just remember that and we'll get, yeah, that's sticky. Hmm. Make sure those marks stay preserved on there when I'm cleaning it up, but it's the fat one forward and the skinny one rearward. They're both slightly convex. So our rear optical assembly is back together and nice and clear. So after we get the mechanics back together, we can install it, put it all back together. Well, these two screws were the toughest I've ever had to deal with. I actually managed to break the tip of this vessel screwdriver in the process, but I was able to grind it down and, and live with a slightly fatter, stronger tip. And um, so no offense to them, but the Nikon set screw was stronger and I managed to finally make them both move, but it was a big challenge. So now I'm gonna remove the key. Let's see if it just pops out. Yes, it does. I put a little arrow marking forward. Help me to restore it. And then we should be able to simply unscrew the helicoid. This is where we always want to be careful because let's just make sure everything is oriented. Okay, we have the inner helicoid, that's the ring that stays put. That's the one that had been 
key that we just released. And then we have the outer one that it works inside the body. Of course, the principle is that if you turn the intermediate one while retaining the, the, the center one in against rotation, then you get the shifting motion. And so what we do one at a time is we start with the inner one and remove it. That's what I'm going to do. There's that aperture there. Boy, that screw hole looks a little strange. It's almost like there's a piece of a screw in there, but I think it's just the adhesive. Um, those were very snugly. That wasn't even the one I just worked on. So the inner helicoid, I'm going to keep the middle one in place and I'm going to watch the number of rotations. Here you can see the aperture. I guess you can't see the aperture. There you can see the aperture. And we are going to turn it There's one turn, and I'm already seeing that um, the rear edge of it there about almost halfway. One turn. Two turns. turns. Maybe I went a little past because I didn't see it. Four. It's feeling a little scratchy, means it's about to release. And there it does. Okay, I'm going to hold that position, go a little past, that's okay. And then I'm going to make a mark. And so I have inside there's a, there's the tip of a screw. That tip of that screw is almost nicely aligned with the center of the filter slot. And I think that's all I need to know. This is going to be a single start. I'll be amazed if it's a two start. And so we're just going to do a test run. And then it goes back in that way. Well, now I've managed to monkey that up. That's okay. I'm just going to remember that. There we have the inner one, which is going to be ready to be cleaned up, re-greased. For a fisheye, I'm going to use a heavier number 30 grease because we don't do a lot of quick focusing. You kind of set it and forget it, mostly. And um, the next, next will be this, this one here. And they go the opposite direction. So this tab is starting about at the midpoint of the filter slot and one
two, three. I'm going to go back and see something. One, two, three. Let's see where it bottoms out. One and three quarters. Okay, that may be a helpful double check. Okay, back to start. Two. This is rather stiff. Three. Four. Five. Six, getting lighter. Seven and wobbly and ready to pop out. And it popped out again right at the midpoint of the slot. Everything seems to happen at the midpoint of the slot there. And I don't think it matters because that's a single start. There's no way to get it wrong. The only key is getting it in the right number of turns when you're getting it set up. And then inside there we have a copper ring you can see. That's the ring that holds in the uh, aperture control. And I'm not sure if we need to really move that or not. You just pick at it to pull it out and then you can clean it up. Um, I'll double check that. I may do that because I just want to get the grease off of that, um, the helicoid of the main, the main housing here. And it may be nicer to be able to submerge this. I've put a few things back together here, particularly that filter wheel. I had to balance some things while the ball detent was on the upper surface and then slip things down into place to make it, it work. Um, I had a few little challenges because I put things, I, I didn't really have good enough notes when I was taking apart the helicoids. Um, and I was saved by the fact that I'm taking these videos. And what I, what I did preserve were the images of where the little keys and stops um, were before I disassembled it, and that was the key. Um, counting the number of turns is handy and so on, but I put it together the first time and I was off by one turn for one of the helicoids and something rubbed and it was clear, so I, I went back and, and I'm glad it rubbed because otherwise I would have had a, a lens that didn't focus. Um, I'll go into that a little bit more, but before we put in the focus ring stop key or whatever that's officially called, um, we need to put this ring here in, and so I'm going to screw that in. So now I have gotten things back together with the focus ring. It required some tightening or advancing of that set screw in there to get this snug enough and um, with a little wiggling and tricks involved. But this operates smoothly. It doesn't rub like it did before. The filter operates smoothly. I haven't even put the eight filter housing screws in place yet just because I'd like to uh, make sure I don't have to undo and redo if there's a problem. And I haven't put anything in the rear of the lens back or even the, the retention ring that covers the, the helicoid key there. And everything not only works right, but it looks right. That look at that little key in there as it moves that less than a millimeter is just like it was before. And similarly at the front end, this key is as it was moving before. Um, one good tip that I should have done is take a little X-Acto knife and make a little scratch when the when this key is at infinity, when this key is at, you know, one or both ends of its travel, just so you have a mark to say I'm in the right place. Um, with this lens, they're all single start helicoids, which means you can't get it in the wrong orientation. You can only just have it the wrong number of turns, which I did with one of these by one turn, and it rubbed accordingly. So now because it looks the same, I am confident this will work. So from here on, I'm going to pay attention to when the when the lens element 
uh, has to go in and that's evidently going to be before this much uh, narrow um, bayonet mount goes on. So the lens will go in and then this. Uh, before the lens, I can put the, um, the aperture ring on. So after getting the aperture ring and the bayonet mount figured out and installed properly so everything works, I realized I didn't screw the lens element down in here. I didn't screw the lens assembly. So I took that apart, got a little more practice, and time to put it back together. The lens is, is keyed in place, so I don't need to worry about the orientation of it. Um, there's only one way to do it. And uh, thank heaven for magnetic screwdrivers. I use one of these, which works nicely to get your screwdrivers restored. And um, unless you have really fancy pantsy watchmaker screwdrivers, which are non-magnetic, non-magnetizable for obvious reasons, and not very handy for lens work. There's one. I'll leave it gentle until I get the other one set. So we're back together and we have just a few more little parts to go. This is the last one. That's a little tiny one. Second to last one is probably the biggest, one of the biggest parts or sub-assemblies you can get for an icon. This goes over here. Ah, and that, that answers the question for me. Um, this focus ring is a little tricky because it has only these two screws holding it on and they're only attached to the little silver key in there. And that means everything else is loose, and so it's just nice slipping, slip fit. But there's a little rattle to it. I'm now realizing that that shim I just put in at the forward channel of the focusing ring, that gets trapped by this rear rim here of this very clean lens. And that's going to hold things together. The only thing I'm not really too happy with right now, let me check about cleanliness there. So the only thing I'm not too happy about is that my infinity focus stops past infinity and I'm doubtful that assembling this on there is gonna change that. In, there's nothing in here that I can envision for being able to change that. I made sure that I got the, the key in the right direction there, the same way it was originally, and it appears to be essentially symmetrical. And so, um, who knows? I'll test it. I'll see whether I'm getting sharp focus at the click or whether I'm getting sharp focus at infinity. Anyway, on this we have a little, a little hole at the, um, where the screw tip rests. And we'll make a note of where that is, just to the left of the two feet when I have this set at the stop. You can see how far off that infinity is, and I'm really not too happy with that. And it's definitely focusing there. I'll think about that. This is easy to take on and off, so we'll just put this sucker back together. thread it. I've got a better idea. Oops, that's not a good idea. There we 
here. Something tells me that's what I'm looking for. No, I've lost my spot. It was a two meter, there it is. Always try again and find it. That's what I often do. Okay, it's getting tight at about the right spot. Now I'm gonna watch for the, the hole and you're not gonna see it. Well, I've got it screwed on so that I can see the set screw hole in those threads through the aperture. So I know I'm in the right place. we could have gone into this lens in the front, but when there's no reason to, that would be pretty insane. If I got a one that was cost me nothing for parts on eBay, it might be fun just to explore. There we go. So if you don't hear me from me again, that means this worked well on my camera, focused right. I can live with the whether it focuses at infinity at the click or infinity at infinity, um, I'm willing to be satisfied on this. And um, I'll ask around when I meet some experts uh, if there's something I should go at in there to, to, to resolve that, if it is resolvable. Anyway, thanks for sharing this with me. I appreciate your patience with my learning my learning the ropes along the way. Okay, I just figured something out while uh, testing it. It went from this very slick, nice, improved um, motion, which has now gotten stiffer for reasons I figured out. Um, I was wrong. I thought because this was all, this focusing ring was attached with only the the two screws that uh, I just wanted to get that as snug as possible and I wanted to get that key all locked in in there. Well, I was wrong. That key moves up and down and in that slot. And so what's happening is it's binding. So before this focusing ring was moving up and down slightly as it turned and it seemed all smooth. And then when I put the this shim and the, and the objective locked onto that, what was happening is the, the ring moves, starts bearing against this, and then forcing that wedged in key to slide, which it doesn't slide very happily. And it gets back to what the original motion was, which was smooth for a moment and then struggles. And now it's, it's smooth totally. So, I need to loosen up that key so it's not in a wedging condition. Maybe I'll put just a, a little touch of grease on it so it slides smoothly and not be afraid. I was so afraid of getting a rattle because everything was so rattly with it only connected there. What happens is it's all going to be locked in place and I'll probably put just a little bit of grease on the face of, of that shim so that it can, um, it can move smoothly on the shoulder and in the uh, focusing ring. So I've gone back in and loosened up the, the key and it's no longer nice and happy and snug right now. It's the way it's supposed to be. So this is rattly and it shifts this way. It has a little bit of a shift this way, but I think that's just fooling me. I don't think it's really rattling in the key there. I put just a touch of helicoid grease in there. And so now, once it all gets clamped down, I think everything's gonna move the way it needs to and it's gonna focus smoothly for the first time since I got it. 
And please that now just rotates smoothly through the whole range. One finger, that stops. It's pretty interesting that it doesn't even reach that range of the focusing ring. It makes me wonder if at some point this focusing ring was removed from another model. It's easy enough to look online to see if this is the wrong, the wrong ring, but um, I didn't notice. I maybe in my early photos will show that this is uh, that could explain the infinity. I've tested it since cleaning it. It cleaned up beautifully. Um, the the images are great, and they lack the fog that it had before. And um, and frankly, fully open in bright daylight, the distant images are equally sharp at this end of the infinity symbol as they are on that end of the infinity symbol. But this is smooth from end to end and has just a little bit of fore and aft play. And I think that's just the nature of the fact that this ring is held down only in those two spots. And um, if I changed my mind, I, I suppose I could try and get another, if I could loosen this screw, see if tightening the objective down would constrain it more because that's what's holding it together. Um, I will tell you that this does not want to turn a degree past that point and I really have to crank it to get it there. So I'm going to leave it alone and have this nice 50 year old uh, focusing performance that's much smoother through the entire range. It used to be smooth and then it puts the brakes on and drags the whole way, almost feeling like it was play for a portion, but that play was really the, um, that had to do with that uh, focusing key. So I consider my project to be complete and I thank you for joining me for it.